you have a shoulder injury? Over the past 20 years of my life, I have competed in a number of sports, everything from soccer to golf to CrossFit competitively at a very high level. Specifically in my CrossFit career, I was in search of points, winning at whatever it took. I trained smart, as smart as I could, but the sport and the nature of being a competitive athlete means you push yourself to limits that can ride the line of safety. Now, in my competitive CrossFit career, I unfortunately sustained a number of injuries to different parts of my body, but the one that probably haunts me the most still to this day is my right shoulder. I never had a diagnosis of what actually went wrong in there, but I would guess I have some sort of labral tear in my shoulder. This affects me in a variety of different movements. I can feel it when I'm pressing. I can feel it when I'm pulling. I can feel it when I'm doing deadlifts. It really depends on the state that my body's in, but sometimes it gets aggravated by life, by stress, by overtraining, and that's what happened to me this year in January at the end of January. So the question that I want to answer first is, should you completely avoid an area that is in pain? Now, before I give you the answer to that, let me just say that there is no universal answer that I can give to coaching you through pain without having an opportunity to assess you and to really put my hands on you and see you move in person. So take whatever I say today with a grain of salt, but these general recommendations have worked for me and for many others for a long time. The first rule of thumb is motion is the lotion. What I mean by that is if you can accompany resting and protecting a joint along with some movement, movement that is relatively pain-free or completely pain-free, the movement is going to enhance your recovery time. When you move a joint or when you move a part of your body that is has been in pain, what it does is it drives blood flow to that area. Blood carries lots of nutrients and it removes any buildup of waste products that have been in the area. We need to get immune cells, which are blood cells, to the joint to start helping aid in the healing process. So. How do you gauge whether something is a movement you should include or not? I like to use the pain scale of 1 to 10. 0 being no pain, 10 being the most excruciating thing you could think of, and I really try and aim for nothing more than a 3 out of 10 on the pain scale. If something doesn't hurt more than a 3 out of 10, then I will include that in my movement practice as a way to try and heal a particular part of my body. As I was choosing exercises in this warm-up and throughout this entire workout, that was the deciding factor on what exercises we're going to get included. The second thing that you want to start to think about and that I think about when approaching healing is if an area of your body hurts, there's no one universal, this movement's going to hurt you, this movement's not. So if somebody says, hey, you have knee pain, avoid squatting. Well, some types of knee pain aren't exacerbated by squatting, but instead they're really exacerbated when you hinge forward or you put the hamstring under a lot of tension. So with my shoulder in particular, I know that pressing overhead bothers it. So things like handstand push-ups in particular definitely fall off of my priority list. The other thing that I know is that if I do pulling exercises or anything where I retract my shoulder blade, that really helps put my shoulder and build stability and strength in a position that helps alleviate my pain. So this particular training session was a heavy pull, shoulder retraction, back of the shoulder, posterior shoulder capsule strengthening workout. And so many of these movements were wet, well in my wheelhouse to do safely and effectively and push intensity. Another key point to think about when you're doing sh workarounds for an injury like your shoulder is how am I building in stability to my training? So one of the exercises that I do in my warm up, especially when I'm trying to rehab or even prevent shoulder issues from coming up is the trap three raise. The trap three raise is an exercise that helps to train specifically the lower trapezius muscles, which are on sort of the mid lower portion of the trap. So you'll see me often when I'm in shoulder cycles of pain or of instability, incorporating more of those trap three raises into my warm up. Okay, the final note of the day. When doing workarounds for shoulder pain, choose exercises that are highly stable, not unstable. This is showing up in this particular workout in the form of us choosing more machine-based training protocols. We're doing cable lat pulldowns, a Smith machine RDL. We're also doing some cable curls throughout the workout, and we're doing things like assisted pull-ups at times with a band. 
So all of these options and all of these choices are to add a bit more stability and sort of minimize the intensity that is required on stabilizing muscles in the body. Now there's always the argument that functional training on unstable surfaces is the best way to train your overall stability and to make your body work harder to coordinate lots of big movements and functional patterns. Now while that is true, that might not be what you want to be doing when you're in pain. If you're in pain, you do not want to put yourself in more of a risky position. You want to be able to focus all of your mental energy on good quality contractions that are repeatable and keep you in a position that doesn't feel painful. So let's review those four lessons for the day. The first, make sure you understand how your particular pain patterns show up in movements. Know that not all knee injuries and not all shoulder injuries are created equal. What movement patterns really exacerbate it for you and do your best to avoid those so that you never go across, and this is lesson number two, that three out of 10 pain threshold scale. The third lesson was find movements that help build the stability of the joint that you have an issue with. Last but not least, Number four, choose stable movements, stable environments to perform your exercises. I hope wherever you're at in your injury cycle and rehabilitation that you're finding some success along the way. And hopefully today's tips are going to help you get out of shoulder pain and start working towards a healthier, happier version of yourself. If you have other tips on what's helped you get through your injuries, please comment them below and make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so that we can keep getting this information out to more and more people like yourself. Thanks for joining.